interesting story that arises in the history of De Sanzanim's teaching in the West was um, uh, a letter I read once of his that um, a student in the West, an American who this letter was written probably in the 70s, it was after the 60s, and the young generation of that time had felt it had become free of the materialism and the, the empty life of their parents' generation, which looked for just material things and status and high-quality experiences that the younger generation, which liked nature and harmony and peace and all of that, started to oppose as... as empty and, and wasteful. So the student wrote to De Sansanim how he and his father constantly had conflict, constantly had conflict, constantly had conflict. And this student who was practicing Zen with De Sansanim said, my father really likes expensive cognac. I think that that's so horrible. There's so many suffering people in the world. So he wants to talk to me all the time, but I think, how can I talk to a man who would spend money on expensive cognacs when there's so many suffering people in the world we could give that money to? And so, but we have this conflict, and I'm living at home with him, and I'm having this really hard time, and we're constantly in this conflict, this conflict, and it's embodied by my father's typical bourgeois habits. <laughs> we'll never get along. How can I? Get along with I want my father. I'm getting liberated by meditation. The Zen is really helping my life. I want him to learn about this because it'll fix his life and fix his foolish bourgeois life. But he won't listen to me when I talk about Buddhism. How can I help him learn? He wrote this letter to Desansanim. And Desansanim's answer is amazing. He said, you go out and bottle, buy a bottle of expensive cognac. You go home and you give this bottle of expensive cognac to your father and sit down and drink together with him. Have a drink. And do this again and again. When your father has something that he likes, don't immediately criticize him for it the way you tell me you do. Listen to him. Understand why he likes these things. Then slowly, slowly, over time, your father will trust you and maybe he will open his mind and listen to you. I should try to find this letter someday. The way it's expressed, as always, the way Desansim did, it was pure it was acupuncture, mind acupuncture, perfect mind acupuncture. So he writes back, and a couple of months later, the guy writes back again. This is from the 1970s. We have the letter. He writes back saying, they ask him, how can I thank you enough? My relationship with my father is completely different. I did as you suggested, although it was really hard at first. I went into the store and I bought, I wanted to make sure when I bought it, I went to a store on the other side of town so that none of my friends would see me doing such a foolish thing. I went, I brought it, I gave it up. My father was so shocked to receive this from me. And he was, imagine how much more shocked he was when I sat down and enjoyed it with him. And then when my father enjoyed, he told me stories that he had never told me before. He told me experiences that he had never shared with me before. And he said, I did this one or two or three times, sitting down with him and drinking from this. And then our conversations opened up into other areas. And then one day, my father, after having a drink, said, Son, you are very different these days. What is it that has made you so changed and so pleasant to be around? And I answered my father, Well, nowadays, Dad, I practice meditation. And this meditation makes me feel very happy. And his father said, Yes, you seem settled and happy in a way I never saw you. Like. And the man wrote, from this point, my father asked if I would introduce him to a book of Buddhism, or I don't know how far it went. But there was a harmony that appeared. So that's this line. Beautiful.